All righty, here we are on Wednesday because it's Wednesday always. So we're here on Wednesday. Uh, I haven't looked at the date yet, but I think it's March 30th, 2022. Well, I got that right. I didn't wasn't sure that was, but welcome to the Dev Talk Show. You see on screen my co-hosts Andy Schwamm and Rich Ross and their Twitter handles too. So make sure you give them a follow on Twitter because I think Andy especially is active on mm -hmm. Twitter. Not starting, to, not... starting tomorrow with, oh, with yeah. tips oh. and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be very active tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, probably from eight 30 uh, AM till about eight 40 AM. After that, <laughs> I might take a break again. Um, <laughs> I right. used to be well, active on Twitter. Yeah. I think uh, I actually I'm not 100 percent sure I have the audio here completely right. Let me see real quick. I think I don't, nobody's complaining. I think it's right. I hear well, you. What's guys. funny is that I'm hearing I'm getting. Huh. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the meter for rich light up when Andy talks. Oh, that's a ventriloquist thing that we've been working on. So what's actually happening is this isn't me. I'm just moving my mouth. Rich has mastered this impersonation of me. Yeah. It's, so uh, Meg pretty... is saying Andy has an echo. So is this, is it somehow getting fed back? I wonder if it's going into Rich's uh, tiny thing. Rich is, Rich is investigating. Yeah, I'm looking on my end to see if there's anything weird going on. Yeah, I, I don't hear, I don't hear an echo. So interesting. Okay. Because I'm seeing you're both echoing. So where is it coming from? I'm betting it's, it's gotta be on your side, Chris. I'm doing. Yeah. Oh man. Unless, um, unless it's one of those silly headphones things. But we're all wearing headphones, right? Like we're not echoing back into our, uh, you know, coming out of speaker or anything like that, because that'll do it sometimes. Yeah, when you both talk, it lights up both. Maybe you have it um, doubled. So I've done this before, and this is a little technical stuff for people watching. So sorry about that. But um, if you have this, if you have the uh, the OBS feed going into, no, sorry, the Skype going into OBS. But you can have it, it comes through multiple channels. So you might have like the, the default, like all audio one happening, and the also the one for each of each of us individually. I think there's a way to do them both like that. Okay. I don't know. Uh, does, but I definitely am, it does, but I don't have an idea right now. I am definitely seeing right. when either of you talk that both of them light up. So I might just mute one of them. I don't know what's going to yeah. happen there. I, if you mute one of them, then it should get rid of the double. But yeah. you won't be able to if you're if you're capturing out the individual audio tracks, that won't work. In the post, it'll be fine for here. OK, well, sorry, everybody. Hopefully you can hear both of them now, but not echoed. And it's just really that was just really strange. So hello, hello. Case, let's test it. It works. Here's my voice, Rich. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hmm. All right. All right. Trump well, you can hear. Here we go. There we go. Nice. Live. You know, that's live television, right? Is that what it is? So, here we go. But hey, we've already gotten. Uh, yeah, we should come in the live show next time. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of chat on. We got a lot of chat online here. Right, we got a lot of people here. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna have some fun. Uh, Dark Elder says, "Happy Wednesday." Yes. Off the rails gaming. Love to see some try hack me. That's great because we can't wait to try it. And uh, and then we did get some good tech support here. Right, tried turning it off <laughs> and back on again, which is definitely the best advice. It is a good advice. And uh, here we are. So I like this uh, this try hack me idea that off the rail gaming is, is mentioning that we're going to try this try hack me thing. And it, I think try is is a pretty good uh, 
first word, right? Because for, for at least definitely for Rich and myself and Chris, you may have seen it. I've never even seen the website, I don't think, unless you showed it like on a previous week. But I don't, I don't think you showed it. I had never even seen it. It's try for me. Like it's a brand new experience. Um, and I'm really into, you know, listen, cybersecurity. I mean, it, we're just hearing about it all the time on the news, at work. It's a big deal at work. We're just we have so many efforts going on at work on this front. Right. And I know it's really important to all of us. And it's one of those things that like, you know, as a developer, a lot of people are at working in, in shops that might be smaller, like where I work. Um, we have a we have a department, you know, where people that handle infrastructure and security and servers and networking and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm fairly certain Rich has that where he works. Um, some people okay. don't have that kind of stuff, and sometimes the developer is also sort of like that go-to, like, "Hey, what do you know about cybersecurity?" Right? So, uh, so I think this is like a good topic, like one of these good all-around all around topics that like, this is the dev talk show. We talk about all kinds of stuff. And, you know, we've talked about security on our apps, and authentication and things like that, but this is bigger picture, right? This is a sort of different angle, but I'm really excited about it, uh, Chris. And I appreciate you bringing this one in to us. Yeah. It's a really cool idea, really good topic. Yeah, so I, um, I also think we're gonna, get, we're gonna get to spend a lot of time in Linux, which is great. I'm really enjoying trying to put more and more time in um, and even, you know, dedicating some time to just like living full time as a developer, uh, some, some stuff I still want to want to work through. I'm learning a lot of great things, you know, from this show, from this show, I learned about uh, I already knew about a, a pretty popular open source project. Oh, my posh, which is like the evolution of that that PowerShell command line. Where I mean, uh, I see a lot of the folks in the MVP community using it now. I, I think Scott Hanselman's always showing it whenever he does any demos, and it's, it's it's this extremely programmable command line for PowerShell, PowerShell Core. Well, you know that was actually inspired by similar projects that have been existed long a long time in Linux, and so now I'm saying like, well, hey, I can't wait to customize up my shell. Uh, you know, in, in Linux too, and, and playing with different distributions. And I, look, I got a long way to go, right? It's no secret to folks who watch the show a long time that I'm a, a long career, you know, the whole career on Windows, but I'm very happy to be kind of moving back and, and doing some stuff that I haven't really done since college, frankly, on Linux. So. Yeah, that's a I place do. where, I don't know, Rich, how about you? I'm not comfortable. I've, I've done... It's been a long time. And when I did it, I was like, I probably had like a cheat sheet next to me. Like, okay, here's how you do this stuff. Cause I probably worked on it for a few months as a consultant. So mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm in like really not familiar territory there. Um, Rich, how about you? Yeah. Uh, certainly not something on a daily driver perspective, but um, <laughs> we get to, to yeah. play down in the, in the weeds of, of uh, Linux and Ubuntu when, you know, on the DevOps side, when we're doing things like GitHub Actions and we're running code inside of that Linux box uh, where that actions run or, you know, same thing on the, on the DevOps side with pipelines and even getting into, um, into doing that in uh, through the Windows terminal in a bash shell, uh, being able to, you know, because I've got a run in an SSH into a machine. So yeah, little bits of exposure, but um, it's I, just mainly little bits of exposure, unfortunately, right? I wish I had the time in the project to say, hey, I'm just going to hunker down and spend a week or a month writing stuff in Linux and see what happens. Because that immersion is the way you learn. Yeah, hey, uh, I have point. a side question. I have a side question before we get started here. I'm looking yeah. in the chat. And of course, our friend Chops is here. Chops to you, right? You made, you know, but I see a, a, I see a chat from Cheeks to you. Like, are they related? Like, they have the same last name there. Chops to you and Cheeks to you. Um, it's almost like two people with the same last name there. That, you know, um, I don't know. Interesting. It, maybe it's just total coincidence. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, Chops and Cheeks. You guys can figure it out. Maybe you're uh, distant cousins and you didn't realize it, you know, brought together on the dev talk show at a magical <laughs> moment of reuniting 
long lost, long lost family. <laughs> That's what we do. We bring people together. Chicks is my wife. Is that true? Is that a joke? I don't know if that's a joke or not. <laughs> um, we'll find out. We're all looking at our chat window where everybody's like, <laughs> right, we're waiting ah, for the answer. It's true. All right. Very cool. It's a family affair tonight. That's excellent. Well, welcome to Mrs. Chops. And uh, <laughs> good I to have to you see, here. I wanted to see if I could post Loka's uh, chat message, but it does not seem to be. Oh, you're not getting a yeah. It's oh, maybe just, because it's an maybe because it's a graphic. Just because it's a little em, emoji, yeah. Which yeah, maybe it doesn't support that. Have to see if we can figure that out another time. Anyways, all right. So here we go. Um, as an aside, we were talking a little bit about about Linux, and I, I could tell you, and and this might be an interesting show topic is. Uh, is I was working on something, and it, this happened to be Azure Pipelines, but this could have also been GitHub Actions or or even really any CI CD. Um, you know, whenever you use one of these products, you're you might be using uh, a supplied a build agent, right? It might be supplied by by GitHub or by Azure or whatever. And um, you know, I actually find Bash scripting quite pleasant in my opinion because it's very c like and it's just real simple and straightforward um i don't necessarily feel that that way about a lot of scripting like i'm looking at you command prompt scripting have you ever tried to script a complicated batch file and even like if then if certain things happen um it's what we had to do back when the only thing that existed on a personal computer uh an ibm type computer was dos but it's not the kind of thing you want to do today i mean i i don't so um, I actually found it quite pleasant. And so what I did is um, when I when I when I wanted to do something, which was essentially I wanted to grant a permission to something in Azure and I knew how to do it through the CLI, but I did not know the object ID. So I basically had a bash task that said, OK, ask the CLI for the object ID, store that in a variable, then call the Azure CLI again to do what I really wanted. Now. There are other ways to solve this problem, but you know, it's kind of like, let me just see if I can do this. And um, it was kind of neat because I got, not only did I get it working, I was actually quite great. I looked at the code and I said, I feel like this is really reasonable. I, I, I can look at this later and I don't feel confused as to what what this did. And, uh, and, and what I found really interesting is the Linux agents in Azure Pipelines they had all these utilities that I that I needed to do the task. I mean, they had stuff you would expect to be built in in Linux, but um, the Azure CLI returns like a JSON object with a with a whole bunch of stuff, and I just needed one property out of it. And there's a very popular uh, tool in Linux, uh, at least in the Linux open source world, called JQ or something like that. I can't remember what it was called, and it'll basically you can give it given a piece of JSON, you can say, hey can you just kind of give me this little property out of it? Kind of like an X pass style thing, if that makes sense. And it was already on the agent. And so then I did a little bit more exploring and I said, you know, they put a lot of, a lot of useful utilities on this agent, just ready to use. And, and I thought that was cool. There it is. Like off the rails gaming says JQ parses JSON. And that's right. And, and so here I get this object back from the CLI, but I just need this one piece of it. So have a little query, goes out and gets it, throw that in an environment variable, run the next command. Uh, and then after that, we had the show on bicep. So I redid the whole thing in bicep, um, which I, I liked. And I actually found like pros and cons to each. Uh, I know that might seem, that sounds like a show there, right? Like yeah. pros and cons between yeah. when do you want, when do you want code to do your deployment work? And when do you want, when I look at bicep, I think of it like a specification, like, Here's what I wish the garage looked like. Make it so. If half the garage is already built, great. Don't tear it down. But if you, right. you know, but if you write code to do it, you got to do stuff like, well, is the tool shed in place? Because if it is, let's not buy another one. You know, um, the different philosophy. Yeah, it handles a lot of those kind of, you know, what's my current environment look like, and and how is what I'm sending you now different? It handles a lot of that just with the tooling. Right. Well, that's not really bicep. That's arm. Right? Yes, right. Yeah. right. Exactly. Which bicep creates arm, but right. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. 
you know, that's that's the whole concept behind ARM, right? And you can there's an attribute you can flip that switch yeah. if you want to. Yep. And tell it to actually tear things down, but you know I don't know why you would right. do that. You know? Right, but I was just thinking like there's one way to look at it, which is code based, and another way, which is more like the best way I can call it is like blueprint based, where I would hand a a skilled artisan like Andy, I would say, hey, I don't care how you make it happen, I just need these eight things in the cloud. And Andy looks at it and says, well, six of them are already there, and the seventh one is there; it's just half taken apart. I'll fix it for you, right? Like that's the handyman approach. Where the other approach is, no, 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 I know what to do. Uh, my code will, my code will rule the day. And and I just find them, I find it interesting that that um, there really are different approaches. But that's right. I think that's why they call it bicep, right? It can't have biceps without arms. And bicep, I guess, strengthens your arm. I, I don't know. Oh well, Rich got muted there. Rich is on mute. I can't oh, hear Rich. Sorry. Yeah, that was me. Um, yeah, I, I, I have not heard that, but that is a, uh, a great way to remember it and a, and a good tagline. I'm sure remember. Thanks, Meg. Yeah. All right. So Stop. if you've never yeah. been to try hackney.com, this is what it looks like. Um, reminds me a little bit of when we played with, when we, we did some, had some fun with, I think it was code wars. There's mm -hmm. more than code wars. Like hacker rank is very similar. Um, there's multiple sites where you can do coding puzzles. Um, so, uh, oh, interesting. I like this. I just learned something tonight. Off the Rails Gaming saying there is also YQ, which parses YAML. Tuck, tuck that in the back of my head. That's what I, my favorite thing about this show is is when, when I get to learn from the folks that join us. So thank you. That's, that's, that makes it all worth it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, if you've never logged in here, you can join for free. Uh, I've done a little bit of playing around here. So I have discovered that as you get down the track, I started to run into paywalls where they were like, hey, you're doing great. But if you want to learn more, you got to sign up for a plan. OK, fine. Right. But I think there was enough that we could try this out. And and the other thing I like about it is you're going to see some interesting stuff, in my opinion, that they've been, you know, you know how I'm a big fan of do it all in the browser type solutions. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think it's a wonderful way to, to, to maybe for students who all have Chromebooks now or career changing adults, someone looking for a career change, you get a hold of a Chromebook. It's not the big investment of a PC and maybe you could do all your development on it. And I love those kind of solutions. So, and more on that, I think in the future, because that space is really growing. So, um, this is, uh, what you see when you join, you can create a login, um, they, like they say here, hands-on hacking for all skill levels. They'll even teach you. We're going to start out looking a little bit at this complete beginner introduction where they'll start off by teaching you a little Linux, which is great. If you're just completely brand new, awesome. And um, and then, of course, you know, there's there's different dashboardy stuff that we're going to look at. But uh, what I want to do is bring up, let's bring up my... When I, since I've actually logged in here, I get a slightly different view. I get this dashboard. Chris, can you, can yeah. you share with us too? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Otherwise, I, I forget, see it on the delay. Yeah, I always forget yeah. that it's much it's easier if I share the screen out as well over to Andy and Rich. So that there should help. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. So if now you I have, see it. There we yeah, go. If, you, if you have an account... You come in and you have a dashboard and you can see I've made, I, I tested it out. I made a little progress. We'll be able to take a look at these again. Um, and there's these different learning paths. When I click on learn, there's these different learning paths. Uh, I, I, I tried a little bit here in complete beginner and a little bit here in junior penetration tester. And, uh, and, and we'll see <laughs> junior how man. it goes, right? That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some really cool stuff here. Um, I, I know later on you start doing things like playing capture the flag, which, uh, is something I've heard of in security circles, but have not participated in myself. So like I said, we're not going to go through this step by step, but I clicked on complete beginner. Now, when you do the complete beginner tutorial, which we actually are going to skip, um, we're going to skip some of it anyway. What they do is they make sure that you understand how to use this interface and how to bring up an in-browser virtual machine to use when you're working, which I think is awesome. 
Um, I want to start off by taking a look at this quick one. Most of the time there is a video straight from YouTube that, that you could maybe watch to get started. It's not required. And I don't think it's going to be required for us. But the format is that you walk down and you have tasks to do. And uh, sometimes the task is answer a question. But here they say, listen, it doesn't matter what you answer here. You just got to got to click through, you know, and this is maybe why I should have signed up again. I didn't realize that it wasn't going to let me do it again. Can I? I don't know if it lets me. Ah, reset progress. Perfect. Great. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. I was thinking of having a second account ready, but I'm glad that they had that. So they're going to let me do it again, even though they say, yeah, you did this already. That's fine. So, you know, they're just talking about here. They're saying, listen, one of the most important tools you have when working in, in cybersecurity is, um, oh, the banner text I have is laying on the pop up. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right about that. You got the Z index. Is I thought you fixed that. Didn't you fix that um, once before? Just turn the topic off. All right. So they start off by saying, hey, let's uh, let's talk about tooling that exists for you to search um, for vulnerabilities. I, I really I think this is getting your feet wet. You're not you know, this like let's let's understand what you might do. So all you have to do to get through the first one is just click. And then the second one, they say, so let's let's say, for example. What if you are uh, what if the particular task that you're working on? is that you've downloaded a JPEG from a remote server and you suspect there's something hidden inside it. How can you get it out? Well, let's just start searching, right? And so they're just trying to give you the idea that, listen, you can learn a lot. Like, you know, stenography is the art of hiding a message or a file inside another file. Uh, you can learn a lot just by searching. That's all they're saying here. Nothing, nothing else. But then they say, okay, um, let's answer these questions. And they, what they want you to do is they want you to go discover the answer yourself. So they say in the Burp Suite program that ships with Kali Linux, which is a distribution of Linux that's often used for penetration testing because it ships with all the tools just pre-installed. It's just like really just ready to go. Um, what mode would you use to manually send a request? And it turns out I actually went ahead and did what they said. I I came up with a Google search and, and I went for it and... And I eventually figured it out. So, um, you know, I don't know any of these that you might know. Like maybe the two of you might know what are automated tasks called in Linux. That This one I actually knew without looking up. No? Curious. Because this no, one I, I knew. Don't. I was really surprised. I, I, well, I wasn't super surprised. I said like, oh, that's right. I remember this. Uh, and we could go look it up. But automated job tasks in Linux, I, I you know, oh, the term for it is cron yeah, jobs. I remember that. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, now that you say it. Right. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I went and looked these other ones up, right? So, for example, let's look at this one. I thought this was kind of fun. If a password hash starts with dollar six dollar, what format is it? And I said, you know, I know a little about password hashes, but I've never, I've never thought of them with this dollar uh, notation. It's just not something I've come across. So I did nothing more than say, well, let's let's search for that. And I was like, oh, you know. Dollar six dollar doesn't seem to be helping me, so let's try dollar six dollar hash. Now, interesting that, and here's the interesting thing here. This is a search with Bing. When I tried this with Google, uh, it took me much longer. But that top one right mm -hmm. there, uh, that was that was pretty good, pretty pretty close, right? And uh, this is pretty close too. So, anyways, the point is not to belabor it, not to belabor it. It well, was. Hang on. Um, if I, we oh. do have. A off the rails gaming thinks they know the answer to the first question. So why don't we find out if they're right? Okay. It's just like a, you know, it's like trivia. Yeah. Trivia yeah here, sure. Right. Why not proxy mode? So it's like, uh -oh, oh, that's not it. Oh. Uh, I will tell you that this one was actually uh, a little more difficult than the others. Not because for any other reason than that. Um, I believe the question itself, you might consider ambiguous a little bit because He's not really wrong. So let's look at the let's boy. We, this is really cool. We should um, get Luka some of these other one. answers in here. Yeah. I think it's repeater. Luca says repeater. And it is repeater. Which is awesome. 
Awesome. So since we um, so since we uh we did that together, I'm gonna click on hints so you can see. For their hints, they say, hey, why don't you search for manually send request burp suite? And that you will get there. I promise you, you'll get it. But you might tr you might be like, uh, you know, I is it proxy mode? I, I'm not saying because I saw all that stuff, too. So uh, what hash format are modern Windows login passwords stored? And I actually know this because many years ago, very famously, there was a uh, hacker tool out there that would take all of the land manager hashes and just decrypt all the passwords essentially they were it was very famous they were called lm hashes and then i want to say that it was nt service pack 2 that's how long ago this was it might have been service pack 4 when microsoft switched over to a new format that i believe let's see what did they say here that was called the nt land manager hashes so i remember this from a very long time ago that hashes are now called ntlm hashes um i had to look that up though so even though I, I showed the answer here. I'm like, I remember this, but I still searched. I'm like, Windows hashes. And then I saw an article. I was like, there it is. There it is. NT land manager. That's what it is. NTLM. So um, fun stuff, right? Fun stuff. Uh, it turned out that like when I, if you search enough for these kind of hashes, you, you eventually do see uh, there was a great site that I saw that showed all these different hash functions. I really loved it. Maybe was this it? No, this wasn't it, unfortunately. And eventually what I found is there's a site that tells you or there's somewhere where it says, what if I say hash variant Unix? Will I find it right away? This might be it. Yeah. The six value indicates a type six password hash, a SHA-512. OK, well, I know what a SHA-512. Let's let's try SHA-512. And I, I think I did this. I think I should saw 512 hash. And they were like, no. And then eventually, I think it was something like this. So admittedly, it 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 was a little too picky, in my opinion. But eventually. I don't know which one it was. It might have been Shaw 512 Crypt, where eventually it was like, yep, there's the answer. And I and I actually found that a little on the picky side, but, but that's it. So what they're trying to teach you is you can research just with search engines, right? Great. Awesome. Then they say, well, look, you can research another way too. Here's part three. They say, you know, uh, vulnerability searching. There are utilities that have been categorizing all of the CVEs. Has anybody here, have either of you two ever seen like a, a vulnerability disclosure and it'll have a CVE designation? It stands for Common Vulnerability and Exposure. And they, they assign numbers to these. When I say they, uh, we're going to find out who they are in a second. But um, they get assigned with a in the form of CVE-year and then the ID of the, of the vulnerability. And there's databases and websites that catalog them all. You know, every website, you, everything you've ever heard of, like even like if we go back in time to something like SQL Slammer or something, I'm sure we could go find it. I'm sure we could find it. Or recently there was some kind of remote execution thing in bash that was like oh my gosh it's been around for 30 years and i'm sure we could find it so they basically say hey exploit db is a great place to look things up so they've got some they've got and we can we could look at their stuff but why don't we try some of the exercises where they say well what is the cve for the 2020 cross-site scripting Vulnerability found in WP Forms. I didn't know what WP Forms was. Yeah. So what are we what are we getting out of this? Like, I'm. Well, this is teaching saying, you how to what's research. The CV? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. How to research, right? Okay. You how to so research. basically, right. And then and then oh, we'll see a little Maybe bit later forms. that sometimes the CVEs might have. They might basically tell you, look, here's what the exploit is. And now you know how to now you know how to use it, which sounds like, oh, great. But see, you're pen testing. You want to make sure that your systems are secure to these vulnerabilities from two years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So um, they're just teaching you that you can find this stuff on common websites like exploit the mm -hmm. exploit database. And in this example, if I say. If I just go to the exploit database and I say 2020 XSS WP forms, let's see what I get. If 
I say 20, 20, XSS, WP forms. Do we get anything? Uh, that might have been, maybe it was too much. Maybe I should just get rid of the XSS. And here we go. WordPress yep. press plugin, WP forms, persistent cross-site scripting. I'm going to click on that. And here's the CVE number. Let's go see if that works. And they're like, yep, that's the right one. Cool. So they also show you one other thing. They say, you know, if you want, if you're already in Kali Linux, Kali Linux comes with a utility called Search Sploit. It just comes with it. It's an offline database. It's ready to go. And you can just type uh, keywords into it. So this might be, this might be the, the interesting surprise of the night. But here is Kali Linux running in a virtual machine. Because I wanted, I wanted to see this for myself. And I said, yeah, I want to see, I want to see search exploit in action. Now, sure, I could have gone to Ubuntu or or anything, Linux Mint, and I could have installed search exploit, but I said, no, I want to see it built in. And uh, what was that vulnerability again? It was, it was, let's try this one. The very first CVE found in the VLC media player. Anybody remember the VLC media player? So what if I say VLC That's media awesome. and it go? here comes a, here comes a whole bunch of stuff back where it's like, yeah, here's all the different over the years vulnerabilities for the VLC And you can just player. click on one of those and it'll pop up in a browser with a nice UI, right? No, I don't know what you do next. I just wanted to bring up <laughs> Kali Linux. I'm just teasing you. To say I'm like, just hey. teasing you because it's like command line. You guess you could probably read it if you hit the path, right? You know. Yeah, but I thought, I think it's pretty cool. I personally thought <laughs> that was cool that like, they're basically helping you out. They're saying like, you can learn you can sit in your browser. Now I know about another tool. Um, I thought that was that was pretty cool stuff. So so we also have Kali hey. Linux with us here tonight. Hey Chris. Yep. Is so you spun up Kali Linux inside of a virtual machine, right? I did. I think I might know your next now, question. Go ahead. Can you also get it from the Windows Store and run that's it right. inside of Terminal's WSL? Yep. That's right. Now I haven't installed it. Well? So, okay, Go it, for it. we have yeah. we have the Windows terminal here and you all know I'm a big fan of the new Windows terminal and I already have Ubuntu installed. So here's Ubuntu in WSL2. And if you're not familiar with WSL2, it is is the Windows subsystem for Linux version two where an Ubuntu distribution is running here. I can use it in the terminal, do a little bit of cross pollination with Windows. I am certainly not an expert on that, but I'm having a ton of fun just having this here. So, so hold on a second. What if I, we might have to come back to this. I don't know how long the install is, but can't I go cool. to the Microsoft store? Wow. And can't so this is kind of cool. Yeah. And I, I intentionally said, said, let's install this on air. And can't I say Kali. Oh, you got to type in there. Linux. Hold on. Is, is this? There it is. App. Uh, I don't know if it's a I guess. App. Doesn't, nah, it looks no, like it, doesn't it. it? You don't think um, that's it? Okay. I so, think okay, it is. so you think it is? I don't think so. It's a Debian-based Linux distribution. I think it's, I think I want, I want Kali Linux on WSL, and I'm going to be honest, I guess I should have researched this a little bit more. Kali WSL2, <laughs> uh... Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe you were right, because I think Rich told me not to doubt it so much. And I think it said there, open the Kali Linux app. Was that a real deal? Oh, they're also saying I can do it this way. That's installing the subsystem. So there it is, Kali Linux right there. Yeah, right. it really was the Microsoft Kali Linux store. app. Sorry, I'm sorry I doubted you. All right. Hey, I'm not the Linux expert. I doubted myself when you said you didn't think it was it. So, Well, uh, while I'm waiting for that download, let's look at what the Ubuntu one looks like. See, this is what, you know, it, it still says app. You're right. Yeah. What do I know? So you get an app from the store that's, that's basically puts 
I, I'm not sure what am I running. I'm running I'm running 2004. So at one point I must have come here and I must have hit 2004 get. And then what it does, it sets up the subsystem for Linux for you, I think. I don't know that I have to do anything else. Um uh, it'll ask you a few things once you start it up, but Yeah. Yeah. Once the app is installed, right? Which uh mm -hmm. Oh, you're on the other one still. Yeah. Let's see. So is that download done? Is it done? Uh, Maybe, right? So if it's yeah. done, what if I type Kali over here? Look at this. Kali Linux app. I'm going to I'm gonna hit it. I'm going to click it. And sure enough, here's a little window. So there we go, right? Oh, and it's ready. It's ready. Enter a new Linux username. Huh, look at that. Cool stuff. Um, so, I tend to so like the last one you brought up in the existing terminal. You created like a new, um, like a tab, right? Will you be able to do that with this once it's set up? Is that the I idea? I believe once it's set up, it's going to show up there. I, I'm, I'm going nice. to come off here and put in my, put in the password I'm going to use. Oh, right, right. Although it turns out that Kali was ready for that. It didn't even show keystrokes. So here we are. I am on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Here's a Kali Linux. Uh, what what did we look for a second ago? What was it called? Search exploit was the name of it. And again, all I've done is I, I've done nothing else than install this. And did I sell search search exploit uh -oh. wrong, or is it not? Mm -hmm. No, I spelled it right. Yeah, maybe it's not included in that distribution. It might not be, but it would be easy to yeah. add, right? It would be easy to add. I thought it would. I thought it would be, but you know, did I? Spell That's it? odd that it's not. Um... And that's okay. It says uh, this is a minimal installation right there. See that? This uh, is a I minimal see, yeah. installation of Kali Linux. Right. Right. You so, likely want to install supplementary tools, and they even tell you how to do it. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Good catch. Very good catch. Now, your point about it being in the Windows terminal, let's let's give that a shot. Let me close this. Let's come back to Windows terminal. I might have to restart this. Yeah. I, I think I might have to restart this. So let's let's do that. Oh, boy. And uh... it's pretty amazing. I mean, I'm like, you know, I said earlier, I'm not a Linux guy and, you know, I don't really anticipate using it that much. But but the fact that you got Linux running in Windows is pretty impressive nowadays. Right. Like and then, and then by the way, I saw that tab that it just had it right up there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you did have to restart. A lot I of... didn't see it until I did that. Yep, I did restart. Yeah. And there it is. It's it's awesome. And uh no, I'm a big fan of the of the new Windows terminal and this stuff is cool. Now, I'm I'm a little strange. I mean, I I like using WSL. Sometimes I just pop that open and I also like having I like being able to say, "Hey, I'm going to just bring up I know this is a desktop version, right? This isn't just command line, but I kind of like playing in both worlds." Here's another fascinating thing about Windows 11. Let me bring up um, just because I'm not sure it's installed on the Kali Linux one, I'm going to bring up the Ubuntu Linux. So this is a little bit of an aside. I knew we would get into this. I figured we would. Here I am in Ubuntu Linux on Windows. Uh, there is a notepad-like uh, program, graphical program called gedit. Right? So let me type gedit. And look what fires up. If not, gedit. While I'm in Windows, but this is this is from I'm pretty sure it's from the X subsystem. So so wait, Linux so graphical let me just make sure because you're yeah you're you're Chris hang on a sec so you're sharing your screen so it's a little strange because we don't get the full you know maybe we we feel like we don't get the full uh, effect of it but I just want to make sure I understand this this isn't like in a this isn't a pop up this is like it would appear that Windows is running this as an app, right? Yeah, right. But it's but it's not a Windows app, it's a Linux tool. So yeah. That, you know, I just want to make sure that that comes across right on the, on the stream. Right. Like, that's pretty crazy, you know. Maybe not the best tool. Like, what if I installed, like, a image editor or something, you know? In fact, what mm -hmm. I think a Scott Hanselman demo that he likes to do is he'll use WSL and he'll install Microsoft Edge Linux version into WSL <laughs> and then he'll run it here and it'll be edge on Linux on Windows and he just I think he just thinks that's funny. 
um, but which it is kind of interesting, right? So uh, I don't know if there's a better example than gedit. It it would have to be installed on the the on the <laughs> the instance. What about VS Code? Well, so That's what uh, I'm just wondering. I don't know if I have code installed. Uh, it looks like I might. <laughs> and here's the thing, though. I, I want to caution you that I am not 100% sure. I think uh, maybe I'm wrong. I thought VS Code was had a little bit of magic going where what it does is it says, well, if you fire me up through here, you see how the VS Code server is running? I believe that this is still Windows VS Code, but it's it's ready to do use all of the... You know how um, Windows VS Code can... Uh, can access your WSL runtime. I don't right. think this is the, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm totally look wrong. The, yeah, I, I, take a look I, at the help. Uh, that's an interesting point. What do you think I should look at? Well, plus um, it doesn't have your extensions installed, right? Oh, it does. It does have extensions installed. Yeah. Yeah, but the OS is Windows NT, right? It does say OS Windows NT X64. If you want to know more, I do believe that there is a WSL graphical doc. I, I believe here it is run Linux GUI apps with WSL on the Windows subsystem for Linux. And um, you do have to have a later version of Windows for this. Uh, and, and again, I do. I use to, to, to Dark Elder's point where he says I have no problem using VS Code Linux. Neither do I. We're playing this this funky game where we're saying I'm in Windows but I'm on WSL2 and I want to run a graphical application that normally you couldn't do in WSL. And they, they have examples here where they say, hey, gedit, install GIMP, right? The, the graphics editor, install yeah. VLC. And I don't think, I don't know that I've installed all that stuff. Install Teams for Linux and then run that through WSL. A little bit of an aside, probably not. We could probably do that as a whole other show, I imagine. Yeah, but, that'd be fun. I thought I it was fun. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was fun to have Kali Linux running. I wanted to see can we get it installed in the in the Windows subsystem for Linux and we could and quite quite quickly I thought. We did that pretty fast. So anybody watching, you know, you want to try that stuff. Um let's move on, I think if everybody's okay. I don't I don't think we need to do some of these. I think what people probably want to see is 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 let's do something that feels a little more like like uh Cybersecurity, right? Yeah, let's hack. Uh, now, let's see how that goes. Let's hack something. Let's so I moved web. on to this or junior pen tester, and I tried this introduction to web hack web hacking. And um, yeah, and let's see, walking an application. As you can see, I have not done this. So here's the cool part. Uh, start machine. We haven't seen this yet. It starts up right in your browser. Now, granted, I think they've got a pool that you pull from, but, uh, it's getting ready. Access it via the attack box. Oh, I didn't. I thought, yeah, start attack box. I thought it just popped up to the side. At least it did for me earlier. Here we go. Here it comes. So what does it say? IP address shown in 42 seconds. What does that mean? So I could SSH into it, I believe. I don't have to use the in-browser um, view that I'm about to get, which is, I think it's cool that it's all can be in browser. I think I can, I can say, hey, you've started the box, gave me the IP address. I, I'm pretty sure there are some uh, recommendations. Um, then they say this URL will update two minutes from when you start the machine. So I think we still, I guess I should have started this earlier. Uh, it looks like we still got some work to do here. It says start the virtual machine. Well, on so this let's, yeah, let's, two minutes. What's it, what's it say oh, above it? Here's a short here breakdown of the built-in browser. Okay. But go ahead. Yeah, okay. Like it says, you're no, right. I was just you're, trying to think about what are yeah. we going to be doing here? Right? Yeah. So they say uh, we view. can view source, um, which you could do by hitting F12, right? Any, any one of us can sure. hit F12 and view. Uh, the inspector, we can inspect, see all the network requests, right? So um, they were saying here, 
start the virtual machine, wait two minutes, and now you can visit this URL. So let's let's open it. And I am I imagine this is just some pretend website. <laughs> okay. We got a pretend yep. website ready to go. And they say, when you're ready, go ahead and open it. Now here's the great part, everybody. I have not done anything beyond this. So this should be, hopefully it's really interesting. I hope it's much better than, <laughs> don't press F12 of Missouri. I love it. Um, I don't know what that means. That's a, that was in the news. Whoops, I didn't mean to kill it so fast. Um, that was in the news a while ago. So um, hopefully this isn't like opening Al Capone's vault and we say like, <laughs> oh, there's nothing in there. So here we go. This machine can access other machines you deploy on TryHackMe. Please keep in mind, when testing any target that is not deployed is prohibited. Of course, you're solely responsible. I gotta love it. This machine expires. So look at that. So I've got in a box that I can attack from this, this particular Linux. And look, it's in the browser. I love it. And then here's a website that apparently we're going to attack. Let's see what they want us to do. Uh, I've never read this. As a penetration tester, your role when reviewing a website or web application is to discover features that could potentially be vulnerable and attempt to exploit them to assess whether or not they are. These features are usually parts of the website that require interactivity with the user. So they're saying that there is a web a homepage, a news page, a news article, contact page, some customers, a customer login page, a sign up page, a reset page. So uh, they're just giving us a walkthrough of the site. I suppose I could theoretically click around here and I could see some of these things. Here's a here's a place for email and apparently I can log in here. Let's let's see. Is it want to move on to the next thing? I know we're kind of zooming a little bit. So I think all they're no, going to say good. here good. is they're going to say, let's look at the page source. Now, for a lot of folks maybe who watch this show, uh, viewing the page source might be a piece of cake to you, but they do teach you how to do it, which I like, right? Maybe you've never done it before. So they're saying right. lots of ways of you could use this view source action or you can like we all I hit F12, right? Um, and they're teaching you, know, are you, you supposed about to the be, code. I'm just curious. Yep. Chris, are you supposed to be using the browser in this side box to penetrate? I could. Or... I mean, I'll open it. Let's try it. But at the same time, they did give me the URL directly to it. So it's not like I'm not looking at the same exact site. Yeah. yeah um, no, but but to your point, wondering. to yeah. your point, let's see. Okay, so... I mean, it, can you cut and paste into that? It might be a little slow. Work. But uh, yeah, let's let's just bring this over there. Oh, it didn't let me paste. Maybe because it's, it's a little tab yeah. on the right, on the left there. This thing. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Clip oh, on. look at that! That's cool. Okay, put it in there, and then it'll show up in the clipboard. It sure does. Nice. That's okay. a cool idea. Yeah. Nice. Okay, now let's Come up. Yeah. Let's see if the site comes up relatively quickly. I guess you have to clear that thing. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. yeah, this thing's slow. I don't know what it's doing, but all right. Now I think they're even telling you like you don't have to use this, right? Now, but I think in later exercises yeah. you're going to want to use their built-in stuff. Now, uh, as developers, we we know a lot of this stuff, and I don't mean to. Um, I certainly don't mean to put off anybody that's like, well, hey, this is all brand new to me. Um, but I don't know that this show is is about like basic web development. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, so they're saying they're saying, hey, you know, view some page source, and then what else are they asking to do? Uh, what is the flag from the HTML comments? Okay. Flag. Maybe I should have paid more attention. Let, let's see if they talk about it a little bit more. We get a flag in the flag.txt file. Dark Elder saying that uh, if you connect to the VPN, use um, your own. Yeah, it'll be a lot faster. Yeah. And you know, I can appreciate that. I think. I'm impressed that they even have this, which is great 
for somebody who has no other options. But I will admit that definitely it's kind of slow. So they say here at the top of the page, you'll notice some code. Uh, yeah, it didn't even finish. Um, mm -hmm. This comment described view the web page in the comment to get your first flag. Okay, let's see what they say here. Oh, I see. I see. So this is what they're trying to teach you. They're saying that this comment gave away some information. This comment said, mm -hmm. hey, everybody, we have a new homepage coming. And maybe you're not ready for the world to see this yet, right? Does that make sense? So Yeah, totally. Since you gave it away, developer, uh, what was it called again? New home beta. Let's head. Let's head over to it. New home beta. I know that so many exploits. So many exploits are actually found like this because people put stuff in applications like this, sort of by mistake. That there's this page that's un unfinished, and here's where it is, or something like right. that. Right. And they're telling you your first flag that you you know congratulations you've discovered something you shouldn't have seen now this seems harmless but what if this page is your it's a work in progress and it's really sensitive stuff and you haven't implemented the security yet and and there it is anybody just check it out you know <laughs> so right first this should be the first flag and there we go awesome. by the way i don't i don't know if you saw in the chat yep my friend loka says pro tip we have to view the source on the contacts page. So there must be something good in that one. But I don't know if we're going to get to that or if you want to just jump to it or what. But um, Yeah. It sounds like there might be something funny there. So now they say, what is the flag from the secret link? Well. Is it different? Is this was the secret link or no? Maybe there's a secret link on the other thing. Maybe there's a... What is the flag from the secret link? Well, maybe. Oh, wait. Yeah, you, um, so you have to go back to the source, I think, right? Right. Do we want so to something look at the, in the source? source that's not in the comments on the previous page? I wonder. Okay. Yeah, let's go look. Is there a, a secret link hidden in here somewhere? There you go. It's right there. generated. There's. Yeah, it's that thing right there, static, try hack me. Yeah. I think that's the link. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to copy the element really, but. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Let's try this. Let's see where it goes. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know that that's what they meant. What have we got here? I think the first bit of instruction said to view the source on the contact page. Maybe it did, and I wasn't paying attention. I know somebody said it. Loka saying, I think the first bit of instruction said to view the source on the contacts page. Did you crook? You skip something, Chris? See? I probably How do I view did. the source? Oh, no. Yep. Okay. Oh, if you view further down the page, source, there's a hidden link to a page starting with secret view this link to get another flag okay so let's, dun, dun, let's come dun, back dun. Here. you have to go to the to the context page you're not on the context page oh you, are you i'm not but yeah go to contact yeah. it's what's interesting is they said here You'll see the contact page link on line 31. But if you view further down the page source, there is a hidden link to a page starting with SECR. So just because I see the contact page link, I wasn't 100% sure that they meant. So here's the. Sorry. <laughs> Well, maybe it's in the head. Maybe it's a secret. Maybe it's hidden right? in the menu. Yeah, that's what I'm. Go to the head. Here. You're above it, I think. You know, you know what might be easier actually. If you do actual view source instead of using this thing, you'll just yeah. see the whole thing all open. You're up. probably 
You're right. Yeah, where's view source? There you go. They said line 31, contact link. There it is. And then contact. They, said, they said further down the page, you should see the S. Oh, here we go. Secret page. Our dedicated, Our dedicated staff, staff are ready to, already. and there's a secret yeah. page, and and you click on that, and there it is. There's our flag, I think. <laughs> so I get what they're saying there is is don't don't think that because you've uh, that no one can see it visually in the browser that everybody just can't inspect right. the code. Right. So sorry, people use. Um, yeah. It's one thing to use a. Um, you know, like server side, like where you, you know, you take something out of the page and it doesn't get shipped down to the client, right? There's ways to do that. But, but, you know, a lot of people just put some sort of, you know, uh, HTML kind of thing that just like hides it. And, and it's not really hidden if it's part of the HTML or CSS or something like that. Once this goes to the client, it's there, right? All right. Right. And so they say, uh, Let's see, we saw external files can be included. You'll notice these files are stored in the same directory. If you view this directory in your web browser, there is a configuration error forbidden. And did you ever have to deal with this in the early days of the web? Or heck, forget early days. How about last week to make sure that your web server is not just letting somebody browse contents? Oh, so God. apparently, yeah. apparently this server, uh, that it's busted here. So if you view the directory in the web browser, it's not, con when they say there is a configuration error, I think what they're saying is this server, it's a security hole. It's letting you browse, right? Which you, mm -hmm. which most of the time people don't even realize is possible. So let's take a look. Let's look at the source again. And where's their CSS? It's sitting in this assets folder. Okay. So let's just try, obviously, Oh, I shouldn't say obviously, but if I click here, I can browse straight to the CSS file. That's not a bug. That's just life, right? But what if I try to browse to the assets folder directly? Oh, look at this. And this seems kind of, it's it's funny. It doesn't, it seems elementary to me in a way, but I remember this life kind of in the dawn of the web where it was like, Sometimes you would go to sites that would just flat out say, like, here's a bunch of files, click on them, whatever. And mm -hmm. we've come a long way where we, we generally don't like allowing folks to do that anymore. But I remember sites that would say, uh, click here to see the files, and it would just be a file directory listing just like this. Oh, yeah. So totally. anyways, here's the flag. Which and so if you if you're if you're kind of new to what we're talking about, new to web development, I think what I'm saying is that. The things that they're showing here is this is a poorly configured, poorly secured site where a hacker would just have a field day looking at files, looking at things and finding out things that maybe might lead them to a place where they can do some real damage. Right. And you know what? Let's let's talk about this for a sec because you think, yeah. well, no one's going to do this. Right. But not everybody is a professional developer. Right. You have people that are going, you know what I want to do? I'm going to create a little website for my business. Right. And I learned a little JavaScript, you know, like I learned a little bit of stuff. So I'm going to put this thing together. Right. Um, and and they, they don't know this stuff. Right. So it's not like this never happens. Believe me, these exploits are real. They might seem trivial to us. They might seem, you know, sort of like, well, we're not going to do that. But let me tell you something. If you've got a big team of developers, um, you'll find that. Um, People on the team, you know, sort of make mistakes and stuff like that. Or somebody resets something because they're debugging it, you know, and they go, oh, I'll, I'll flip that back. You know, I allowed directory browsing. Let's just say, and I don't know why you would do this, but I put directory browsing. I turn it on because we're trying to solve a problem, right? And then they forget to turn it back off again or something like that. Like, these kind of things happen. So, interesting, interesting. We know a second ago... We were talking about that framework page and I sort of dismissed it. What they're saying here, and you know what? I will tell you right now that this is absolutely true. Let's read this little thing. Viewing the page source can often give us clues mm -hmm. into whether a framework is in use. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a site and just I've just recognized how the circles are swirling and whatever that I say to myself, 
oh, this is a bootstrap template and I bet you they're using React. And then I will open the page and sure enough, I'm looking at it and I'm like, yep, this is React. And I mean, it's crazy to think that you can spot that stuff. But what it also means is that a, a pen tester or a hacker can look at it and say, oh, this site is using XYZ and I think they're using an older insecure version because they recognize the telltale signs. So they're saying here earlier, when you both correctly pointed out to me that I should check out that this page was generated using a pretend framework, this does, this is called the THM framework, but they're just trying to say, this could be any modern set of tools. So the hacker says, oh, well, why don't we go take a look at our, our friends, uh, the THM web framework? And it tells you, oh, well, the current version is 1.3. Uh, let me go back to that comment again. They're using 1.2. Yeah. It's out of date. So now you head over to that Maybe exploit a, database, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other thing is, though, Chris, at the top of the page, a lot of times there's those page headers um, that have metadata in them as well. And I know in our organization, I think we have stuff at like at a high level that blocks all that stuff from going out. Like, you know, yep. um, that stuff's bad also. So um, check it out. Let's you go see, to, wait, is there a chain? Oh, yeah. yeah, you go to the, to the fictitious was website. This is that link that I went to. And you go to this website that's that 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 the code sent me to. And now the 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 uh, observant hacker says, wait a second, the current this thing's out of date. What if I look at the change log? And the change log says, Oh, we had an issue where our backup process was <laughs> creating a file in the web directory, which potentially could have been read by website visitors. But we fixed that. However, yeah. running the old version. <laughs> so I should be able to you go should. ahead and uh, read the update notice and use the information you find. Okay. Well, it sounds like I should be able to go to tmp.zip. And I got a Download zip file. It. Which, of course, I should just open this file. <laughs> of course, I shouldn't worry at all that I'm just going to uh, open up this file here from tryhackme.com. Right. But here's a flag. Yeah, they're hacking you. Yeah. And the flag says, keep your software updated. So this is the final flag. So you I know, think we just I'm really this. enjoying this, Chris. Are you good? This is really cool. They do it in a in a pretty lightweight way. I'm sure there are much more complicated scenarios as you go down the line, right? But still, um this is a this is a really nice way to present this information. This is cool. Yeah. I haven't done this exercise. So I guess we kind of played our first little round of capture the flag here, I think, where we basically we found these telltale things that prove that we intruded, but they're harmless, but at least we prove that we did it. And, uh, you know, what if something important was in there? What if that backup file had old passwords or old credentials that get you into the production database? I mean, who knows, right? Um, sure. Backup copy of the config files in there, you know, totally, yeah. totally is the case, right? So they actually do switch over to developer tools, which is what I was doing earlier. Yeah, um, is, yeah. The page source doesn't always represent what's shown on a page because CSS, JavaScript, and a user interaction could change the content. Okay, cool. Uh, this means we need a way to view what's been displayed in the browser. And okay, Element Expector assists us with this by providing us with a live representation of what's currently on the website. And when they say live, they mean this is how the HTML and everything in CSS is, looks right at this second. Um, we can also edit and interact the page elements. And believe me, I've done that. Uh, you ever gone to a website that doesn't let you paste your password in from your password manager? And I, I know there are extensions out here to deal with this. I have in the past opened the F12 tools, found the password element and pasted into the value attribute, my password so that it would pop up because they had all this JavaScript code that wouldn't let me do it. And I'm like, I got a 24 <laughs> character jumbled password. I don't want to type it in. So that's pretty funny. Um, so what are they saying here? The first two articles are readable, but the third has been blocked 
with a floating notice stating that you have to be a premium customer to view it. Oh, oh, yeah, ah, yeah, but yeah, did yeah. you put the real article behind the floating block, right? Again, he's ready right. to hack this, right? He's ready to go. So let's see. <laughs> this is, let's see. This is great. Let's go to the news section. And in the news section, if I were to click number one, welcome to Acme support. Okay, whatever. Let me go back. Let's try this premium article. Three tips for keeping your printer working. <laughs> oh, we can't, we can't watch oh, it. Oh no. And you oh. know, I've seen websites and I think, I think the reason you do this is to get people interested in joining is you show like, it's a teaser. It's, yeah. it's right there. The article's right there. All you yeah. got to do is pay. Well, what do you think? What do you yep. think we should do, Andy? What do you think? Well, let's go to page source, right? Right. And, well, uh, and yeah. we'll find that, uh, we'll find that pop up and we'll just like, you know, make it not visible. I think would probably be the, the way to do it. Um, you should be able to click on it on the, on the, in the, in the search thing. Right. I call can it? click this, right? Thing. Select yeah. an element, right? Yeah. Click that and just go to the maybe, top box or something this. like that. Oh, look, they have a div called a premium customer blocker. There you go. Oh, that's, okay. that's so nice. Well, that's first so of nice. all, you could, the fact is right even here, you can go below it and see the content, right? Follow top these things, right? Yep. So you, you could see it anyway, but that's not really what we want to do. I think we want to just turn off the. Uh, so in the, I have an option to delete sure. the element. Yeah, Boom. do that. There you go, right? <laughs> th not so hidden. Yeah, this is fun. Um, All right, so this is a this is an, a flag that's an actual image. So yeah. I I don't I have to go type oh, this now. Image. But that's cool though. That's yeah. cool. So let's go back and let's let's put in the flag. Thm, not was it not so hidden? So hidden. Here's where I wish that yeah, they were using uh, Meg's. Uh, what do they call it? Snake case with with hyphens. I've really gotten so lazy about typing underscores correct. these days. So here we go. Sorry. That was, I thought that was cool. I thought that was cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. So cool. now they're saying, Hey, what if you look, what if you use the debugger to figure stuff out? Wow. Okay. So click on the contact page. Each time the page is loaded, you might notice a rapid flash of red. We're going to use the debugger to work out what this is. And if it contains anything interesting, Debugging a red dot wouldn't be something you do in the real world as a penetration tester, but it does allow us to use this feature and get used to the debugger. So head back, go to the, uh, they said it was the contact page. Is that what they said? Click on the contact page. Each time the page is loading, you might notice a rapid flash of red. Now I, I didn't see it. Well, maybe. It's... Kind of sp so, oh yeah, yeah. I see it now about right here maybe, it maybe it's be, not coming through on it, it might no, not be I coming through on, on stream did they you know what i didn't see it on skype but i saw it on stream actually so i saw it on the stream so it, yeah i get it okay there's a little flash of something now they're saying let's read what they say after that um you can see all the list of resources and they're saying, hey, why don't you take a look at flash.min.js, okay? So uh, here in this, uh, I can say sources. And I've got this, you know, it's a little big so that everyone can see it on screen. And in the assets folder, we have a flash.min.js file, which looks like it's just, uh, back up just a little bit. Oh, I fun to read isn't it so there's some kind of constant in here it. can i can i prettify it from in here yeah um where's the isn't there a button to click on that right click on it no no right click on know. the text i think it was wasn't it uh maybe it's a plugin that i have um it could be oh look no, no, it's down below. Maybe it's there's a way to do this. I know there's a way to do this. Now, is it granted, down I think I'm I think I'm viewing this in Edge. I could try a different browser too. No, I use Edge all the time. I don't I don't know. Anyway, whatever. That's let's probably we'll not super important. Sorry, let's see what else they say. They say, yeah. "Oh, look at this. They're telling you right now." Pretty what you just said, that's what I'm talking print. about. Yeah. 
That's the looks thing like I'm two about. braces. Okay. Okay. I I look. I'm learning something right now. This thing right yeah, here is thing pretty at the bright. bottom. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Boom. See. Okay. What do you know? What don't you learn on this show, right? So now we've made it look nice. We can see what's going on. And what is it they want us to do? Um, you'll see the line flash remove. That little bit of JavaScript is removing the pop up. So they're basically saying, what if we set a breakpoint, stop processing, and before it gets removed, we check out what the red box says? I think that's what they're asking <laughs> okay. us to do. Yeah. So let's get yeah. a little breakpoint in here. Awesome. Now let's refresh the page. Refresh the page. We're going to stop right here. And there's our flag. <laughs> there's our flag. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. All right, so let's go. Now, I don't know what that scenario would be in the real world, but it's still uh, well, like they're pointing out is, is, fast. is if you write yeah. some code that you think, well, nobody could pos even if they read the code, nobody could possibly understand what the code was doing. Well, sure they can. They can set breakpoints. They can examine yeah, exactly. the variables. They can right. figure it out. Right. So the flag is THM catch. Catch me. Oh yeah, I like this, and I I would. I'm like, gonna be up all night playing with this. I'd like to take this to work. To be honest with you, similar. I'm thinking the here. same thing, Chris. Yeah. I'm feeling like there's a there's a, a a lunch and learn in the future on yeah. this try hack me thing. The network tab on the developer tools can be used to keep track of external uh, resources. So I mean, I've used the network tab. So um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and move ahead and say like, I, I, yeah, I've used a network tab. Sure. I, I understand it. Let's, let's refresh. And it basically, Oh, I've got a break point here that we'll get rid of. So let's refresh it again. And we get to see, uh, well, normally you get to see, Oh, you know why? Probably. Well, I don't know. I'm surprised I didn't see anything there. I thought, but whatever, let's see what they really want us to do. They say on the contact yep. page, there you go. Uh, we should be able to fill in the contact form and press the send message button. And you'll must, notice an yeah. event in the network tab. Okay. All right. Oh, you know what the problem the is here? Page. It's remember last time we were playing with this and I was just trying to isolate web sockets. My browser is still set to it. Uh, so I need to set it to all. Oh my gosh. So now we get yeah, to see everything. And they were saying to submit something here. Okay, so let's. Uh, oh, I love how autocorrect just is like, hey, let's use your real information, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> it probably doesn't Although care I, if it's an email address anyway. See if see think, if it doesn't probably doesn't care, does it? All right, so let's send the message because what we want to do is we want to see this contact message thing. Contact form was sent. Okay, so what we're now seeing is that. This post, this made a post out to a uh, out to a site. So you got to know, you got to know what a hacker is going to do. They're going to start hitting that site. Let's start testing that site. Maybe that site's got a bug. Maybe I can get it to return everybody's email addresses with a little Bobby Tables action, right? Now we're going server side. So examine the new entry and view the page the data was sent to in order to reveal a flag. Oh, all right. So. So they're saying, yeah, I'm, sure, say it was, yeah. I'm sure that, that you, know, you might do more than just throw this up in your browser. You might start hitting it with with requests that are nasty or whatever. But let's see what happens if we go, oh, well, it's not that. What was that? Yeah, that was that really long. I guess I didn't ask. I Copy value? Copy value. Okay, copy the value. There we go. And here we go. <laughs> Unless you can so, cut and paste this one. This all seems kind of quaint. However, when you build a website that calls your own web API, don't think that that web API, which has public endpoints, even though you might secure what happens over those public endpoints, don't think that people aren't going to start hitting it. See, like, can I can I reach some kind of swagger UI documentation? Or maybe you've got a right. secret admin endpoint that that you don't have secured very well. So uh, there we go. Finish the room. That's cool. That was fun. That was cool. Yeah. So how many right. of these things are free? Like how far can we go with this? This is because this is cool. 
so when I uh when I was running through this, I clicked to uh let's see introduction to web hopping when I when I came to authentication bypass, they were like, Oh wow, well, you know, that's a premium experience. Um and uh subdomain enumeration, I think no, that was the last one. So I think we went we went, uh, you know, walking the application content discovery, I think, are the two that you can do. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, it's certainly something that I may may try running through because uh, it's pretty cool. But um, I don't know if you can do more. Like if I go down to the burp suite one, I think maybe, maybe burp suite I mean, basics listen, works. Yeah, you know, burp suite basics I, I, I just like to say this, right? Because so, sometimes people get all upset. Oh, my God, they charge for this thing. Well... They're entitled to make a living, right? I, I get paid to do my job. So they're charging now 10 bucks a month. I don't know what their what their process is, but you can subscribe to this. Maybe maybe you can just, maybe it's not a, a full year thing. Like what if you say, I'm gonna do this for a few months, 10, 20, 30 bucks. That's not so bad, I don't think, you know? Yeah, so they have a burp suite, basic one. You deploy the machine and then you can, they say you can deploy the machine and then you could use the attack box, or we could head over to our Kali Linux uh, VM and and just go directly to the IP address displayed there. So, so pretty cool, yeah. You see what Meg says? They have yeah. You have a comment there. They have an advent of advent code type of thing. Code. It's really cute. The Grinch tries to hack Santa's workshop. Are, are both of you familiar with the <laughs> advent of code things that tend to come out around December? Um, I have I never seen an advent of code. I know what advent is, and I'm Jewish, yeah. but I know what an advent calendar is. At yeah. least I got that much going for me. I've um, seen several cause... organizations run advents of code, which are, like you said, they're in December, and they're usually 30-ish day things. I see F-Sharp usually has one, the F-Sharp community. And what they are is they're daily tasks that might uh, they might teach you something, or maybe they're they're designed for beginners. Uh, I, you know, there are all sorts of things. Um, I, that might be an interesting angle a little bit later. It's kind of like when we get to October, and I think they call I think the Lee Open Source community calls it like Hacktober or something like that. And the idea is is that everybody commit to a, uh, a pull request to an open source project. So. Now, do we want to try this burp suite one, which I think is going to require me to bring up my uh, Kali Linux um, VM? I think. I think. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, if I'm speaking for the audience here, I don't know how we can not let Chris do this. He's been dying to use his Linux thing. I think we got to give him a few minutes on this at least, right, guys? <laughs> Yeah, uh, exactly. and I'd like to see what the next step is. I haven't tried any of this, although I don't know. Does that mean it's not loading? Were they like, sorry? Or maybe, I don't, I don't know. really know what burp, uh, what's burp suite? Okay. So I know what burp suite is. It's it's a series of tools that are everything, you know, they're things to help you with pen testing that, that you could maybe like, like, have you ever used, like say Wireshark? I, I don't want to say Wireshark's part of yeah. Burp Suite, but you've used Wireshark. So there's a Wireshark like oh, tool. Yeah. There's a Fiddler like tool. Um, and then yeah, just keep okay, on, keep gotcha. on thinking of tools, keep on thinking of tools. So, so let's try it. Let's see what this thing says. It says, first we got to deploy the machine, which I should have started already. Oh, you can only deploy two at a time. So terminate the walking. That's I think okay. you can think use the same one, can't you? Uh, it says that I have to. Well, what it complained about is it said, hey, you can't. Can't do any more. So I think I have to go figure out what machines I have running. And terminate them, which is okay. my mistake there. So. Uh, walking an application we were doing. Terminate it. Boom. OK, machine's been terminated. Great. And then I don't, what is this? Connected via attack box. Oh, I see. Uh, wish I knew how to terminate that one. Go back to see, access a thing. I don't know what that is. All right. I think I'm okay to, to, to get that started though. Let's go burp sweep the basics. 
Let's start the machine. There it goes. And what we're waiting for is we're waiting for this IP. But while we're waiting, we can see, oh, it says the machine started already. Cool. Great. Uh, but it's still, I guess, I think it still takes a minute. So fast. I think it still takes a minute for this. Yeah, you can do so once the machine is fully loaded and the IP address is displayed. Okay, fine. Written in Java. What I don't know is when it was complaining a little bit, I'm a little concerned that uh, what addition will we be using in this module? Burp Suite community is what they're saying. I guess they're not teaching us much here. They're just making sure we know what we're doing. What runs on a server and provides constant scanning. That probably sounds like an enterprise edition. No surprise there. And Burp Suite is frequently used when attacking web applications and what do they use for their other term here? Server application? I don't know what it is. Mobile applications, they're saying. I guess that's fair. All right, got through that one. Um, We've installed it, the dashboard. So I'm wondering if that error message that I got is because, oh no, here it goes. It was just, it was just thinking about it. Okay, cool. All right. A temporary project should be okay. Hopefully using burp defaults is okay. Just kind of want to see this thing get to where they're looking for it. And then the first time you open Burp Suite, you may be presented with trading options. If not, you'll be presented with the slightly daunting Burp dashboard. <laughs> which, uh, slightly daunting. It's not that daunting. They're like, hey, you should probably use. So here we go. This this looks like what they're showing us. Great. That's perfect. I want to see kind of what looks like what they see. So that's that's perfect. Does that zoom a little bit? I don't know how that is on the on the stream. It's probably a little tough to see. I, I don't know if you can zoom though in this situation, right? If I had zoom it, then yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you could. Yeah, hold on a second here. That's a little better. So this is theirs. This is this is back on the website. Oh, oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. But let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I, okay, good. Zoomed Ooh. in there. And then let's head back to, this is Kali. Ah, oh, but it didn't work. Didn't work. Okay. No big deal. All right. Yeah. Um, All right. We'll do the best we can here. There may be a view. Uh, I was hoping there would be. Well, there is an expand on each of these little um, boxes. There's like a, yeah, I wonder if that doesn't really help. <laughs> Just pops it out. Oops. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll make do uh, audience. We'll, we'll hang in there. Hopefully I didn't. I'm not sure as much Chris can do, but the... okay. So let's say, what do they say to do? Uh, the dashboard is split into four quadrants. That's great. I'm going to kind of, Hopefully skip some of that stuff. They're saying uh, the task menu allows us to define tasks. Clicking on one of the example vulnerabilities. Okay, clicking on these, opening a window. Open Burp Suite, look around the dashboard. Yeah, sure, I'm comfortable. Of course we are. <laughs> um, introduction to the Burp Proxy. We, we may not be able to get this going, but we'll try. We make a request to try hack me through the BERT proxy. Our request will be captured and won't be allowed to continue unless we explicitly allow it through. You do not need to follow along with this task. Understand what the proxy is used for. So when we open the proxy task, what I'm going to do is open this to the side, see if I can understand what they're talking about. Uh, request was made and then, yeah, I've seen this kind of, so to be honest, I've seen this kind of stuff using Fiddler myself. Um, which button would we choose to send an intercepted request to the target in BERT proxy? I think maybe the repeater. 
whom you're using. What is the default keybind for this? Um, I think they say it. I'm curious, because I have a feeling we're gonna want to we're gonna see this again, right? Off the rails is providing a little uh, insight, I think. Feed to browser, Feed to, browser to the burp proxy, and it is basically a step. And go at that point where you can inspect, alter anything you send to the server. Right click and choose send to. Is that it? No? Okay. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done any sound effects. I'll let you off for a while, but <laughs> I'll bring it back. <laughs> I'll just do some sound effects while you're. Uh... Well, I don't know if I want to stick with this and then maybe just see what it oh, says here. I wonder if this is uh, is too much to that that it that it would have been the kind of thing to say like, hey, if I would have at least done this before. There are two ways to proxy our traffic. We could use the embedded browser, or we could configure our local web browser to proxy our traffic through Burp. This is more common. Oh man! When you got it, and then proxying HTTPS, you you have to install some kind of trust certificate. Which, you know, I've done this kind of stuff before. Like if you install Fiddler, they have a a do not trust certificate that they install. Um for you and uh, even like when you're doing .NET development or any kind of development, usually there's some kind of development certificate you install so that way you can test HTTPS locally. You just have to be careful. Don't don't use that fake certificate on anything important. Make sure it doesn't get used on anything important because I mean, <laughs> you know, the rest of the world will might accident. Well, they probably won't trust it, I would think. So let's see, yeah. for so example. So what if you just try it with this proxy embedded browser though, right? Yeah, so where is that? Proxy embedded it's, browser. Uh, I see there's like intruder open browser. There you go. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And that was a suggestion no. we got, right? Is just give it a shot. Yeah. Off the okay. uh, it's not my idea. I'm I'm reading I'm I'm stealing off the rail gaming uh ideas and making it sound like I was smart enough to think about that. So thanks. <laughs> we have to go to a site in the thing though? Right. So let's just see. What they're basically telling us here is, so this we're trying to go around this and use the embedded one, right? So if I say google.com, that worked, sort of. And what happened is, I guess I could have stayed on proxy. So we got, we got the, uh, we said get HTTP 1.1 to google.com. And basically, Google was like, sure, whatever. Um, I'm not actually even sure that we got a whole lot out of that. Now you need to step through it with forward. And I know right. this. I know this really well because I'm reading the comments from off the rail gaming. But um, there we go. <laughs> so I don't know. What, so yeah. we sent that request. Oh, because right? there's multiple steps. There's a handshake. Yeah. It's probably doing all that stuff, right? Yep. Like you say with Fiddler. I know that from Fiddler. Yeah, and so Google sent us back all this stuff. At least I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. I could, if I'm wrong, it's not. It's just because I'm kind of in a hurry and maybe also never used this before. But trust me, I don't know everything. So it looks like no, we I got we got back. Uh, let's see, what I want to know is what we got back. Uh, What's that? Can I skip it? I wonder if that's bad news. No. Mm, we'll see. So, obviously, you can see that it's going one at a time, right? This this request is going a little bit at a time. It's going and grabbing this image, right? Oh, now you're getting every uh, secondary request for JavaScript, yep. for all the different things that it does, right? Because each one of those, if you look at your network tab, they're all callbacks, right, to the server. 
Oh, and look at all these little pop-ups that are coming up because Google's sitting here saying like, oh, you're not signed in. So let's put up a little thing to tell you that you should go sign in. But yeah, it's like to your point, that was a great way to put it. It's like slow motion browsing step at a time. This is what your browser is just doing automatically. And then finally, I guess it's finally done. And here's the whole history of it. So we can, we could say, oh, that request was interesting. And we could check out the request and the response. This to me is the part that I'm a little more familiar with, right? Look at the request, look at the response. You, but you can change that request. I right? could like replay like it or something. Oh, well, now yeah. you're past it already. Yeah, you're right. 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 I am. I am. I, I finished it off so we could see that it works. And yeah, it's okay. Sure. Firefox said like, oh, I don't know what the deal is here. I, I don't know that I trust. Oh, that's cool. The embedded browser tells you. It's like, look, this is being proxied. So, you know, it's not secure, but it is secure. It's secure enough for what you're trying to do. Not, I don't know. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can solve a problem. That's the point is I want to see if we can solve a problem. So... Is this going to get us there? Trying to solve a problem or create a problem? Well, <laughs> example attack. So okay. having a look at how we configure our proxy, let's go through a simple example. Let's go to the support Here form. We go. Okay. Go time. And I think this is our, yeah. I love how this website recognizes that the machine is up and they go and they, after the fact, drop the uh, IP address right in there for me. So I can hit that IP address. This is the attack, the machine we're attacking. It should pop up, I hope, right? Is it going to do that? Is it kidding? Maybe it was kidding. Unless it's in like a network that you have to hit from the... Uh... Oh, that's true, huh? That's true. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to VPN to this, don't you? Because of that 10 yeah, well, You can probably hit it from this. You, you should be able to hit it from this internal machine, right? This isn't internal, though. This is my Kali Linux box. So we need to oh. VPN. Oh, yeah. Which they uh, had directions yeah. for, I think. Now that that proxy box you fired up though, but we don't want to that thing is really slow, right? Did yeah, it says if you're not using the attack box. We could use the attack box, but we think it's kind of slow, right? We could. And that time, by the way, and, and Dark Elders is adding some suggestions too. And I'd like to say that that time I thought of the attack box beforehand. No offense to Dark Elder, but I don't get all my ideas from the chat. Although most of them, you know, come from you guys. And we, and by the way, like th this is great. Like you guys are throwing out. Off the all gaming should be the guest host of this one. Um, but all, all all of it, all of you on the uh, on chat are really super helpful to us as we're as we're playing through this. It's really cool. So where now? I if I want the attack box, there it is. The problem is, I need that split view to back up. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, here you go. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can get this done through the attack box, and then. The nice yeah. thing is, and maybe, you know, this is where it would have paid off if I would have been like, oh, man, I got to have VPN set up on my on my Kali Linux daily. Oh, you got to do this. Yeah, this is a little silly. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was okay. quick. Nice thing is that was nice and quick. Good. Okay, so. In a real world pen test, we would test this for a variety of things, one of which would be cross-site scripting. Try typing. Uh, oh, yes. yeah. Cool. Remember this one? <laughs> you know, when, when somebody would just old, put script. You can't. Yeah, you're going to yeah. You need brackets, though. Yeah. Ah, see, there's a client-side filter preventing us from doing it. That's the point. Is they're like, hey, so this oh. person thinks they were awfully clever. But it turns out <laughs> that we could uh, we could bypass it. So we need to. Right. Right. We're going to have to turn on burp from here. Yeah. How do we do that? 
and Bloodhound. Do you need like a command line where you can execute it or something like that? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Burp Sweet Community. All right. Good, good, good. Which one do we... Okay. If we can get one of these done, I'll be thrilled. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. And then and uh, then I'll figure out how to set all this up to play with it some more. <laughs> but it's cool. I, oh, yeah. I love how this practice. This is going thing... quickly now. No, this is going quickly yeah, now. It is, this it this is box moving. seems to be faster than the last one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. All, all right. right. We're rocking here. So. Uh, so you want to bring up that browser? Let's see. Do, um, have to do that. Make sure the Burke prophecy is active. And that intercept is on, which intercept is on. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then you can open now, the browser down there. Let's, let's enter some legitimate data into the form. Okay. So, all right. So open the browser. There's that red orange button at the bottom there. Well, I don't know that we right. have to do that because we're already, we're already on the machine that it's, what do I do with my browser? But you need to open up the proxy browser, don't you? I don't know that I do because I'm on this machine. Or, okay. But we're going to find out. Okay, so if I paste that, the question now is what happened to my... Where's my burp sweet stuff? So intercept is on. I could be wrong. Oh, I see what you're saying. Intercept is on on this machine. No, I could be wrong. I might. I might want to open this. Yeah, I think you right. need the browser. Unless the default so browser is set to proxy. I, yeah, I hear you. It very well. It very well could be. Let's, um, let's try it. Let's do that. Let's yeah. do what they're saying. Off the rail gaming's got some ideas, well, but then so Dark refusing. Elder says you need to change the proxy on Firefox to an attack machine. Oh, they talked about that, didn't they? And uh, it says click on the Foxy Proxy icon, top right corner. Is that that thing? <laughs> Foxy Proxy. I remember this. They talked about it. <laughs> this is, we're just like skipping all the instructions because we're trying to keep it going fast. I mean, I understand what you're trying to do here. It does say it's on. Switch to burp and you're all set. Keep where to go. Keep losing it, which is my own fault. Like I know it's here, but because this screen is so small. Uh, whoops, what did I just do? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you just did. See, I already have Burp Suite open. I don't want to open it again. Right, right. But the problem is... You can't is, do like a alt I'm not tab or anything like that. Sure. No. Oh, wait, it's sitting right here. Sorry, duh. So it says intercept is on. And then we had Firefox. And so let's go ahead and save. And then, oh, wait, Let's refresh this and now head back to here. Not uh, intercept should like pop up, right? I don't know that it's going to pop up, but yes. No, I don't mean that, but I mean like when we switch to intercept, it should be waiting for us or something. But... Dang it. I have too much garbage over here. What about an intercept? You click on intercept. You don't want to just use that intercept browser because maybe that would work. Well, I've tried running this browser had... and it doesn't work. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you do that before. Click on Foxy. Right, now we need a viewer's click on select burp. Okay. 
So I think what I've one mistake that I've made here is I think select like burp. Ah, I think a problem that I've is that I've got a couple Firefox browsers open now, which is not necessarily good because it means uh, see, look at this. So here we go. Ta da! <laughs> All right, so. Looking at the uh, practical attack, is they're saying, okay, they're like, you, you tried typing, doesn't work. So now the request is intercepted. With the request captured in the proxy, we can change the email field. That makes sense. So mm -hmm. um, let's look here. Request it says query email parameters. Oh, I didn't want to open Metasploit. I want this thing right here. Request. Oh, maybe not. Is it because we haven't? I think it's I showing think you in the. It's showing you in the thing. Yeah, but I think the problem is, is I haven't gotten to the post the ticket step. that step yet. Right. So yeah. I may have gone too far. Let's go back to uh, Firefox again. And so if here's my contact email, okay, and let's just. We're going to hit submit query now. Uh, that client side stopped me, didn't it? So let's put in even something that's reason that that's going to get us past this thing. So we'll submit yep. the query. And now I think we're sitting now. I think we're sitting in. Um, burp suite oh waiting, I think I could be wrong. Forward once. I want to forward to this there post. Email Here we go. This is it. This there is it is it. at the bottom. Yep. So what we can do is we can change this right sitting right here to be yep. um, that some alert JavaScript. Across it. Yeah. You can paste it from the other side or you're going to type it in. Okay. I don't know if it matters. Um, do you think it has to be? Let's just paste it. I don't know if I don't know if it matters to do exactly what they're asking for. I doubt it. No, but, I don't know if it matters exactly. But since uh whatever. Okay. Do you need any quote or anything? No. I think we're good. I think this is okay, what we're so going we do to forward it. What we're going to do, yeah. So press forward, and I've got to run back to Firefox, right? And I've got a couple Hasn't of these finished things. yet. I think you might have to forward the rest of it, right? Well, the problem is, I think I have a couple of these. Maybe you're right. Yeah, because if you don't finish forwarding and it's just it hasn't left yet. Or possibly like you have to wait. Is there a way to like let it play? Hmm. Okay, now now that I've played through it, let's go look. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So a little wonky because we were on the dual screen, but I could see that makes sense actually, is we we modified the post. We needed to wait. We needed to basically wait for the web page to take that data without cleansing it and just execute it, essentially. Just be like, yeah, sure, whatever. All right. So and uh and you know, listen, what we, we've we've been told for years as developers, by the way, this is my little tidbit of, of advice here, is that um, that's why we always do, you know, we, wa we want to block that thing right there was some there was some uh, filtering on the on the UI that wouldn't allow you to put in invalid characters. Right. And that's fine. But then, you know, that people can get in there and hack that thing. And that's why you have to protect it at the server level. Right. You always want to do validation. 
on the server and on the client, right? That was like one of the right. early lessons for me with because the web. Because perhaps, and we didn't watch very carefully what this web page did, but what it might have done is it might have wanted to pop up a, uh, maybe it, it wanted to um, create like an element that said, hey, you know, let's put in this div, you entered this email address, and then they just splat it in there without yeah. any validation and the script tag activates. I think that's so, what it does, right? It, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's bringing back that name. It's bringing, it's theoretically, it just put like that new name, Chris, in its database, right? And then it was pulling it back out of the database to show you what it had or something like that. And, you know, that's yeah. why we always make sure that we can't put that kind of stuff in our databases. Because some other user, sometimes you don't even see those things because this screen doesn't even display that data because it asks you to add a comment, right? And then some other user, the next day comes in, opens that page, and it refreshes those comments, and they get the exploit. Up pops open the, uh, you know, the the pop up window and stuff like that. And it's 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 pretty common. It's really common. I mean, I'll tell you what. I've been at places where we've gotten attacked with those things, where we found it in the database because yeah. somebody forgot to put on like SQL. Uh, well, it was like SQL injection kind of thing. You know, it, it was in, yeah, it was, it was cross-site scripting, but it was in SQL. It was into the database because, you know, this was a while ago, you know, some, uh, I don't know. But, but, um, but I've seen it happen is what I'm saying. I haven't seen it happen lately because, you know, we, we use a lot of good protections these days, but I have seen it in my career. Right. I mean, uh, I remember. Dark Elder says, I found an XSS the other day in web app. Yeah, it happens. It definitely happens. Yeah, I mean, you know, rule number one is whatever the user enters, do not just turn it around and throw it on your web page anywhere. Do not just put it directly into your database, right? You have to you have to fear that input, sanitize it, assume it's malicious, assume that it's executable code that might be trying to that might expect that you might accidentally run it. You might run it as SQL, you might run it as you might slap it back on a web page, you might you might run it as a process argument and boom. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Well, look Very at that. Very cool. Look at that. We just sort of winged it a little bit on purpose. Thanks to all the help from the audience. That was great. That really helped us a lot. And I'm glad we had some, some experts here who've used burp suite. who have done this stuff. Um, I've done this kind of stuff with, with, with other tools, I've done it with Wireshark Fiddler. I'm not going to say that every tool I've used um, is just ready. It's just ready to go to here's the request you're about to send. What do you want to do with it right now, just in time? That's what is pretty cool about this. Hmm. I think this is a really good site, too. I and mean, I like the way they have it set up with the um, you know good instructions. And we were going fast, so you know, admittedly, I think, right, Chris, you weren't really reading everything, but, um, but it's all there, and yeah, the demos right. are pretty good. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a whole section that talks about how to VPN in here. I I could have figured that out. I could have had that ready to go, but uh, I didn't know. And the cool thing was, is hey, let's let's just try it. You know, let's just try it. Sometimes the fun is not being too prepared because then we. We learn a little bit. Um, sometimes people tell me that they actually appreciate watching, like hitting a roadblock, figuring out how to get by it, is that that can be a helpful exercise too. I've heard that feedback a lot that it actually, um, I've heard that in presentations where they said, hey, I, I actually kind of like that you ran into a little bit of trouble there and then got around it because that makes me feel mm -hmm. more comfortable. Sometimes what happens, real world development. Yeah, depending on the problem, there have been times in different presentations, different topics. If something caught me for hours, like I lost like a day on it, then I will find a way to make sure I bring that up and say, I don't want you to lose a day. So here's something that happened to me. And just remember this. <laughs> well, wasn't that cool? It was cool. Um, you know, I, I'm, one one question I'll ask here, by the way, because because I, I think burp, I, I'm sorry, I was going to say burp suite because that's what's on my screen here in front of me. I think try hack me is great, 
Um, but I'm wondering, I don't, I don't know if anyone knows, are there competitors, are there other similar sites out there? Probably, right? Um, I'm just wondering, you know. Um, yeah, right. Alternatives. I wonder. I don't know. Ninja Hack the box is another, according to Loka. Yeah. I, look at Do this. You guys know what? Do you guys know what uh, Loka Samasta Sukinu Bavantu means? I don't. Means let the entire world be happy. What a nice like sentiment that is, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty cool. That is if I'm getting it right, and, and I hope that I am. Um, but I I was curious and I checked it out, and that's a pretty cool thing. Let the entire world be happy, right? Um. Defensive security proving grounds is also a good one. So I guess there's a few of these. Fallen Hub. Lots of cool stuff. Yeah, Lots you know, cool and, and this was a place that I came across, and so I'm not surprised that there aren't other ones, and I think that's that's great. Um the link that um, Dark Elder posted is a list of training platforms. Um, okay. Hack the box, try hack me, pawn till dawn. This is cool. Let's see, when's uh, when is grab that link here? When's Dark Elder going to be a guest on this show? Seems like Dark Elder <laughs> knows what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. No wonder you knew what you were talking about here. Uh, you know what? I don't have the chat up. But I can even just see. Oh, Dark Elder says, I do pen testing for a living. Well, wow, so there you go. That makes some sense. So you heard it here first. Pen testing with Dark Elder. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Next week on the Dev Talk. <laughs> Very cool. Oh wow, there's a treasure trove here. We'll make. I'm gonna make sure to get this into the, the YouTube comments, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Um, well, it should be in there, right? Because we have um, we have restream going. Oh, you mean in the in the yeah. actual. Uh, yeah. Here's what's really cool is live while we're while we're live, I can go and say I can say show notes. When did you set this up? When did you put those details in there? Um, I just I, I had them in there uh, before the show, basically. Yeah, I didn't see you do that. I didn't know you did that. That's cool. So Thanks look at this, the, the, the YouTube elder. replay already has show notes that we did live. It's very meta, very, is that Inception, right? Is That, that we, is pretty cool. We edit the show yeah, notes we while we're doing often. the show. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so cool stuff, Chris. Yep, yep, that was fun. And thanks, thanks everybody for sticking with us. I really appreciate that uh, that everybody was there to join us on this. And, and so... I think we're right on this, right? Is that next week, Brian Manisi will be back. Yeah. So I went ahead and published it. So he's he's either on the hook or you'll see this get moved and something else get put here on our meetup site. But. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. Um, and then the following week, I'm on vacation. So um, be my last. I'll be off for a week. All right. Fair enough. So if you folks don't know Spring break for the kids, you know, got stuff going on, right? Whole thing. Yeah, folks don't know dealing right. with or Philly.net recent we've talked about this a few times. They recently had a code camp. The entire playlist, there's 34 videos. They are all here, all kinds of different topics. Um, so that is up 
and uh, that link is in the chat as well. I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff to learn here. Um, it was it was a really good a really good set of stuff. Let me tell you some of the things that I would like to see on the show. I would like to talk to to uh, and I, look, I'm being totally unfair. We haven't asked any of these people. I would love to talk about this. Um, where basically this talk was about building link from the ground up in order to learn functional programming. I loved that topic. Um, let's see. Um, this one I found really interesting app builder, which is a low code tool. Um, oh, GraphQL application insights. I mean, there was just a lot of interesting stuff. And then David McCarter with code performance, code and app performance. So, you know, by the way, you're going by this quickly, right? David, yeah. will, David will come on the show. I'm sure yeah. I've been on his show. Yeah. Um, you saw, I saw Joe Guadagno, uh, his yep. name go by, uh, yep. you know, we're, we're, we know these people. So um, if you want, I'll reach out to them and, uh, you know, well, you know, we could talk offline, but yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. All right. Well, what, what a good time. Uh, at least I thought, I thought that was a lot of fun and I'm really, I'm really glad we did that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Good time. So what do you think? Should we wrap it up? I think that's it. I think that's a heck of a show. And thanks to everybody for, uh, for hanging out with us as always. And if you are, if you're watching live right now, thank you. Thanks to everybody participating in the chat. Just, just, you know, lurking with us. Doesn't matter to the platform. We really appreciate it. And if you're watching in the future on YouTube, uh, join us on Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And uh, otherwise, go through the archive right here at youtube.com slash the dev talk show and uh, see what else you want to watch next time. So I think that's it, right? Smooth, man. It's a smooth show. Thanks to Chris. This was a really cool topic. A um, little, little off, not like off topic, but right, like not an obvious topic for us, but a fun, but a really good one. And I, I think it was really cool. Yeah, it was fun. All right, everybody. Well, that's going to do it for us. I think on this Wednesday night, March 30th, we'll see you in April, April 6th, 830 PM us Eastern time. That's next time. So uh, I'll say goodbye for my co-hosts, Andy Schwamm and Rich Ross. This is Chris Gomez, and we will see you next time on the Dev Talk Show.